Hello everybody, my name is Stefano Fazzini. I'm a vascular surgeon and a researcher at Tor Vergata University of Rome, Italy. Hello everybody, my name is Michel Boziers from Münster, Germany, St. Francisco's Hospital. And Stefano and myself, we're both very interested in the Arctic disease. And one of the biggest issues we encounter is when we put in our large pore access devices, is that we have access troubles. So the first chapter is gonna be challenges of hostile calcified access and existing treatment strategies. We all know that many patients are affected by vascular disease. And in particular in Aliak district, we have aneurysmatic disease and occlusive disease. These two pathologies are the same expression of atherosclerotic disease that is very often associated to very extensive and uh, severe calcification. This could lead to a more challenging approach for the treatment and in high-risk patients could be very uh, difficult to treat this patient by endovascular means. So we need the right tool to deliver our endograft to avoid complications such as dissection and to guarantee the vessel patency at the same time. So Michel, what do you think? Which is the biggest challenges we encounter in access? Well, that's a great question, Stefano. And I think there are three issues, three big issues. That is one, tortuosity mm -hmm. of the vessel. We have the small caliber of our vessels. And of course, we have calcium. And if you combine these three, there's a problem with vessel compliance for our endograft delivery. So here's an example of a female patient with uh, thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysms where we've encountered two access issues. First of all, she had very small uh, vessels and secondly, they were heavily calcified. So by trying to advance our dilator from an 18 French sheet, due to the lack of vessel compliance, we encountered this rupture as you can see on the right slide. Um, so what did I do? I, of course, covered it with uh, covered stent grafts, but I wasn't able to advance my uh, device through these covered stent grafts. So I had to do another surgery where I put in an iliacofemoral bypass, delivered the thoracic endograft over this iliacofemoral bypass, and in a third operation, delivered my uh, branched endograft over this iliacofemoral bypass. So one of the solutions is, of course, open surgery, iliacofemoral bypasses or endoconduits. Um, but there is also, since the last decades, endovascular techniques like paving and cracking techniques or uh, endoconduits with paving and cracking techniques where, as you can see here, where we put in a covered stent graft, dilated forcedly and force some kind of rupture also of the vessel wall because there is no vessel compliance here. And then through this covered stent graft, which then of course also occludes our internal iliac artery, deliver our endografts. So what we know is that an hostile axis also is a risk for failure. And of course, if we cover our internal iliac, endo, uh, internal iliac artery, there's also the risk of spinal cord ischemia, especially if we do a thoracic endograft or if we treat thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysms. But if you start thinking also in the long term, we can also encounter limb occlusion. As you can see in this example here, where there's a heavily calcified stenosis of the left common iliac artery, where we put in the endograft and then dilate it just with a balloon and let's wait and happen. See what happens there. Yeah? So we can define many things in EVAR, but Stefano, how can we define hostile access caused by calcium? So Michel, you're right. There is a wide consensus around hostile neck with hundreds of publications. We cannot say the same about hostile access. And we have to standardize this concept and to clarify the meaning of hostile access. We can start from this well-known publication we know that tortuosity is an issue, but in particular, the extended calcification and the presence of focal stenosis and diameter less than seven millimeter, seven millimeter, are considered severe access. Other classification, taking in consideration the grade of stenosis, the length of the lesions, and in particular, the degree of the calcification with the 180 degrees that are considered the most severe calcification on both sides of the iliac artery. To standardize again and to clarify this concept, we need a clear calcification. 
And in our opinion, there are four main calcium uh, grades that could be considered mild, moderate, severe, and concentric. And in particular, these two last classes, if combined with a minimum lumen diameter less than 70 millimeter, in our opinion, should be considered hostile access. Speaking about endovascular aneurysm repair in the abdominal area, we have available endograft from 14 French sites up to 22 French outer diameter. That means at least 5 millimeter minimum lumen diameter needed. But we need a larger minimum lumen diameter for thoracic endograft because we have to address the delivery of uh, 20 French up to 20, 27 French outer diameter uh, devices. So we have uh, low profile endograft uh, available, in particular in the abdominal area, the ultra low profile, but the calcium and the extensive uh, calcified disease represent an issue uh, even if we have this kind of new endograft. And in particular in thoracic area, we have the low profile concept, but we are speaking again about seven millimeter outer diameter delivery system. That is a big issue for hostile access. In case of fenestrated or branched graft, we need probably eight millimeter iliac access because we need a high grade compliance of the vessel to rotate and manipulate the endograft to reach the right placement of the endograft. Looking at this chart, the last generation of custom-made devices or off-the-shelf devices, they need 23 up to 26 French outer diameter. So we are speaking about very large pore devices. So Michel, the calcium still represents an issue to deliver our large bore devices. How we can solve this problem? Well, Stefano, I think uh, a technology that may help us uh, to address this problem is intravascular lithotripsy. And this is something we're going to discuss in the next chapter.